Okay, so this is chapter seven. Chapter seven is on the lymphatic system, immunity, and infectious diseases. So to start this chapter, the first thing that we have to do is we have to talk about microbes. So microbes are also known as microorganisms. Um, how, how do they affect us as humans? So one thing is there are good bacteria, bad bacteria, good microbes, bad microbes. They're, they're everywhere. They would say that they're ubiquitous because they're found on every surface. Um, they're in the environment, so on your desk, on this microphone I'm talking into, on your water bottle. Um, they're all over our body and they're in our body. We can't get rid of them all and we don't need to get rid of them all. A lot of them don't cause any problems. Um, we use microbes to make lots of different food products, so things like yogurt, bread, cheese, beer, wine. Okay, so yeast is a microbe. Um, if you look at a yogurt container, you'll see that um, there's all sorts of bacteria listed. And what that bacteria does is that's going to change the, the milk into yogurt. So it's, it's a good thing. Um, we, use bacteria, or we use microbes to make drugs. So many drugs, some antibiotics are made from products from fungi, so things like penicillin, penicillin, amoxicillin, those originated from a fungus called penicillium. So microbes are really important in the environment because they decompose dead and dying material. So without them, we wouldn't be able to break down leaves and dead animals and things like that. So they're decomposers. Okay, now that brings us to the point where we're going to start talking about how they can affect humans and cause disease in humans. So if they cause disease in humans, we cause them, we call them pathogens. Okay, so microbes are just microscopic organisms and they include bacteria, viruses, prions, um, fungi, so um, things like athlete's feet, um, multicellular parasites, so if you had like intestinal worms or something like that. Um, there's some single-celled animals like Giardia, so all those things cause problems. Okay, now, size-wise, what do these guys look like? So, um, viruses are itsy-bitsy, teeny-tiny, so if this is a normal animal cell, okay, you can see how much smaller, this is a prokaryotic, so this is supposed to be a bacterial cell. Here's a eukaryotic cell, which is way more sophisticated, and then here's a virus particle. So just to give you some idea of the size difference. Okay, so first thing we'll start with is what are bacteria? So bacteria are prokaryotic cells, so that means that they don't have a nucleus, they don't have a lot of membrane-bound organelles, so no Golgi complex, no endoplasmic reticulum. They are single-celled organisms, okay? They, most of them have a cell wall. Their DNA is just in a single chromosome, so it's really small. They have ribosomes, so they're able to make proteins. And then some bacteria actually have um, a little bit of extra DNA in there, and it's in a circle. So it would be a circle of DNA, and that DNA is called a plasmid. We use plasmids in um, biotechnology and biology to study things. Okay, so here's some structures and shapes of bacteria. So we kind of identify them or name them by their shape. So um, coccus, these are round, round balls. So you might have heard of streptococcus. Um, bacillus, these are little rods. Um, spirillum, those are little spirals. So if you look at your yogurt container, there's bacillus in your in your yogurt. Um, so here's here's a picture of a bacterial cell. Okay, so it's got these little fimbri on it, these little hairs, and the little hairs are going to allow it to stick to something like maybe your cell. <laughs> they have a capsule on them. The flagella would help them move. Here's the circular ring of DNA, the plasmid. Um, they also have ribosomes in there. Okay, there's different bacterial diseases. So like, for example, strep throat is bacterial. 
um, syphilis, gonorrhea. Those are different things that are caused by bacteria. You could even think of um, oh, some sort of intestinal infection could be caused by bacteria. Okay, oops, I'm going to skip this slide. So just skip this. I thought I deleted it. Okay, now viruses. Viruses are smaller than bacteria, and they're, they're a little bit different because they are considered non-living. So they're small, really small. They're non-living, obligate intracellular parasites. So what that means is they have to be in a host in order to reproduce. So without the host, if their host dies, the, the virus can die. Okay, so they're not made of cells. They have, this is a scanning electron micrograph, so you can see a picture, picture of it. Um, this is more of a, a drawing. So they have an outer protein coat, and that's called the capsid. And then they have some nucleic acid in the middle. The nucleic acid could be DNA or it could be RNA. Okay, some viruses have an envelope around them. So here's their RNA and here's the capsid, and they have this envelope that has them stick. Um, viruses are really, really specific to which cell they can enter. So not only are they host-specific, like if you think about swine flu comes from pigs, okay, they're also specific as to what cell within the pig or the swine that they would attach to. Okay, so they're very, very, very specific. But we don't consider them alive. Okay, now prions. Prions are even smaller. Prions are infectious protein particles. So they don't even um, don't even have any DNA. Okay, so they're they're proteins. And some diseases. There aren't too many human diseases, fortunately. Um, just a couple. They cause um, the nervous system to break down. So one example is mad cow. Um, so what happens is the normal proteins change their shape, and when they change their shape, they cause the neurons to break down. Okay, normally, these prions are found if you have, in order to get a prion disease, you have to eat or ingest something that contains the prion. So like if a cow eats a part of another cow, that like if they put the ground up the cow and put it into their feed, then that's how they get a prion. So there are some human diseases, but not, not too many. Okay, I'm going to stop this now and start another, another section.